What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the 2023 Polestar 2. We are finally back in the Polestar and what a spec this one has as well. Pretty awesome and good to be back in the Polestar. But yeah, this is the 23 model and that means we have a couple of minor updates to this car and this is also the single motor long range version pretty much the version you maybe would like to consider the most as well regarding range that is pretty interesting let's also start with that the WLTP of this car is 551 kilometers usable or well in real world let's say 450 kilometers would be achievable but that all comes from that 78 kilowatt hour battery pack we also know from for example the volvo c40 and xc40 recharged twin now as for power output this car has 231 horsepower and 330 newton meters of torque and that is more than enough considering this is a battery motor on the front wheels so you have that instant torque and it starts pulling away so you have a lot of torque steering in that sense also so 231 horsepower this car is plenty quick i gotta say 0 to 60, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.4 seconds. Well, that may not sound too fast, but trust me, that is fast enough. I'm also a bit spoiled. I come from the Volvo C40 twin recharge, 0 to 100, four and a half seconds in that car. But still, I gotta say, this car is plenty quick. Now, you also have other drivetrain versions of the Polestar 2. You also have the single motor standard range that has the 69 kilowatt hour battery pack and WLTP is 450-ish kilometers with that car, so still pretty okay. That's also the biggest difference with these two. The long-range version has the bigger battery, but still the standard range also has the 231 horsepower and also 0-60, to 60, for example, 7.5 seconds. Um, yeah, so that's basically the same, but then just more range in this one. You also still have the dual-motor long-range version, 408 horsepower, also this same battery pack, 78 kilowatt hours, and also nowadays have the dual-motor performance version that is good if you have that polestar optimization tuning part as well good for 476 horsepower now that is quick but yeah plenty of offer nowadays on the polestar 2 but yeah if you ask me this single motor long range is maybe the most interesting one now we are currently heading to a dc charging station as the state of charge of the car is currently eight percent so that's pretty low so we got to charge up Heading to a Fastnet DC charger, most of you living in Europe know those places, they often work pretty well. Now this car can charge up to 150 kilowatt max output. Do note that is often in the low ranges, so say 10 to 30-ish percent state of charge. And from there it always will decrease a little bit and yeah, eventually over 80% it becomes really slow so my tip also make sure you charge up to 80 percent state of charge and then head on otherwise you are waiting for a very long time for that last 20 percent state of charge anyway let's head to the charger and over there i'm going to show you guys a bit more of the specs of this 23 polestar 2. Alrighty, folks so welcome to the 2023 polestar 2 and what a stunner it is right so let's go for a little walk around on the exterior and later on the interior as well now this is the 23 model year, but on the front not that much has changed. So basically the typical Polestar 2 still, for example with the you know, very familiar Tor hammer lamps. And this one is the one with the pixel LED headlights. They are amazing if you ask me. Over here by the way, nice little Polestar detail inside there. But I also have the pixel LED headlights, for example on my Volvo C40. And they are amazing. You can basically always run these things on automatic high beam because they are yeah, just so intelligent basically they always do a proper job or well, besides that nice little aggressive look if you ask me the tour lamps always nice to see nice big black grill with the safety systems in there over here and also the camera this one is the one with the 360 camera basically so that is also very usable little subtle polestar logo as always on the hood so let's continue to the side of the car and that is where you see a couple of changes on the 23 model or well basically one big change and that are these 20 inch Polestar wheels and they look amazing if you ask me very futuristic so very typical Polestar-ish kind of design element nice triangles and if you look up close you will also see a bit of in-depth in there really nicely done and also still good for aerodynamic because it's almost a completely closed wheel, so to say. So small parts over here in a bit of a star yeah, style. So this is not the performance version, so no brake or no gold calipers, but yeah, nice silver. It looks good, big brake disc behind as well. So yeah, looking rather nice. So this is the new 20 inch wheel. You also have a new 19 inch wheel. 
also very nice looking if you ask me a job well done by Polestar in that regard now typical for the Polestar 2 a nice little detail element over here what kind of car you are looking at so as you can see the single motor 78 kilowatt hour battery pack this one has 170 kilowatt of performance or power um, if you do not like it you can also peel it off it's a bit of a sticker thingy so not that big of a deal really Polestar ish kind of element if you ask me then if we have a look on the rear of the car you know typical Polestar rear lights let's see if I can turn them on there we go bit of a dynamic animation <laughs> really cool that is now this is the version in thunder so thunder metallic it's a bit of a matte or solid kind of color but yeah it reminds me of the um, thunder color as well from Volvo cars what is it the thunder thunder gray thunder gray metallic color but yeah tinted windows black glass black elements also by the way the rear view mirror of this car is frameless similar to the Polestar 3 we saw yesterday basically the same units more or less so there's a blinker in there blind spot indicator over here nice little bar and this one is frameless so it is one big piece if you want to move this one for your view you basically move the entire unit so that's pretty cool pretty clever and futuristic design done by Polestar as you can see glass black elements around here big piece over here by the way tinted rear glass looks very good pretty cool now I do wonder due to semiconductor shortage the foot sensor for the hands-free tailgate wasn't available for a while so let's see if this one has it it does always make sure to kick on the left side of the license plate basically over there that is that sensor but yeah this is the trunk of the Polestar 2 let's just have a quick look some buttons over here to lock it or to close it a bit of a Volvo C40 XC40 kind of vibe of course over here basically cousins of each other all on the CMA platform little net nice little flap for your groceries we also know this from the Volvos for example two-phase charging cable nice little ski hatch over there some hooking up points some connecting points over here over there as well first aid kit familiar one elastic band over here and a nice 12 volt system what is it 120 watts also usable and also some hooks over here by the way to hook up things you can also take the cover off that's usable for example when you have a dog you can fit a dog in here I'm not too sure if I would put our Labrador in here but yeah I think it would kind of fit but anyway I was telling you guys also about this color so this is the Thunder with Polestar you basically have six colors so let's say we have snow and magnesium bit of white and silver kind of colors then still void black midnight dark blue and this one the Thunder grayish and then new is the Jupiter color I saw that yesterday at the Brussels Auto Show for example really nice and chic color if you ask me really cool that is now we are currently charging this car can do up to 150 kilowatt of max uh, DC charging fast charging over here as you can see so let's have a quick look what is currently going on so we have 58 percent state of charge we are currently doing 97 kilowatts still so that's that's pretty okay I gotta say that is improving they also improved that with over-the-air updates for example so this car runs on the Google Android automotive system and that means you get over-the-air updates pushed to your car which will make it more efficient new applications smarter and whatsoever so that's pretty cool meanwhile the Sun is coming out a little bit so that's nice but just have a look at it with the 20 inches in thunder with the black details it looks really good now fun fact this is still a bit of a Volvo car and that is because this is one of the two cars from the Concept 40 series from Volvo from many years ago. And funny enough, Concept 40.1 became the Volvo XC40 and 40.2 this one. I think it was maybe intended to become an S40, but yeah, it eventually became the full electric Polestar 2. So that's pretty funny. Meanwhile, it is pretty cold. So let's head inside the car and tell you guys a bit more about the interior and also about Polestar. So let's head in there. Now we'll come back in the interior of the car. We're gonna warm up a little bit, but yeah, what a lovely place this is to be. Now, as I said already, this is the version with the upgraded ventilated Napa leather seats and they do look amazing, but it comes with a cost because it costs four and a half thousand euros for an interior. You can basically buy like a little second-hand car of some years old but 
that's expensive for an upgraded interior. Now it does have then ventilation, heated seats as well. But yeah, that's an expensive option if you ask me. It does look amazing, lovely seats to be in. But also then if you consider that this seat already has wrinkles in it and a bit of a blue print jeans kind of vibe going on after 3000 kilometers in this car, this car is still brand new. That is not good if you ask me. So that's a bit worrying. Besides that, you also got the light wood inlay over here with some light elements on it during the night or driving in the dark. Looks really good. Typical Volvo kind of steering wheel, but then with the Polestar logo in it. But besides that, very familiar steering wheel. This is also the handles over here and all that. Still, we have the Polestar infotainment system. So also based on the Google Automotive, as I said already, but then with the Polestar twist with a bit more orange kind of vibes, performance orientated and all that. But yeah, it's a lovely place to be in, but an expensive one. I gotta say, it is great to be back in the Polestar 2. You really feel that this car is way more focused on the driver experience. You also sit a bit more in the cabin, so to say, with this big middle console. That's also a thing I do not really enjoy because it's so wide. I am so tall, so the space over here for my right leg, basically, it's not that great. I gotta say, also when I get in the car, I gotta be careful not slamming my knee into the middle console. That's a nice story about the Polestar 2. First time I got into in one of these cars, I slammed my right knee into this middle console and boy, that hurt it. So yeah, we uh, the Polestar 2 and I go uh, way back already, but yeah, it's a lovely place to be in. And it's nice that Polestar became that standalone brand, that electric performance brand from back in the day. Well, not back in the day, but back in the day, they were the performance brand. Then they became part of Volvo cars. They became the tuning department, so to say. So you probably remember the Volvo S60 and V60, three liter Polestar editions. Then we got two series of 1500 examples with the two liter four sill turbocharged engine, amazing cars. Yeah, in the Rebel Blue, for example, you know, the Smurf kind of color. Yeah, those were the days. And then Polestar became that electric performance standalone brand. And boy, they are doing amazing. Yesterday I was up close with the Polestar 3. If you are interested in that, please make sure to also check it out. The video about that is also on my channel. Yeah, it's good to be in here and you really feel that this car is focused on driving, as I said already. It involves you, it invites you to drive, well, maybe a bit too fast into the corner, but you feel the car handles it perfectly well. You can also adjust, for example, the steering wheel feeling to firm or light or just medium for who likes medium, I guess. Anyway, we are almost at 80% state of charge. Um, I think I'm gonna round up over here and go for a bit more of driving because it's just so much fun. So this is basically the first report on the Polestar 2. More about this car coming, um, what I like, what I do not really like about this car, a bit more in detail, and maybe also some other videos. We'll see, we will see. Anyway, as I said already yesterday, we had the Polestar 2 to Brussels. It was amazing. We had a great time over there with the Polestar 2, with the Polestar 3 as well anyway that being said guys i thank you a lot for watching if you enjoyed the video please give it a like and also subscribe to the channel it helps me out a lot make sure you also browse my other videos about volvo lincoln co polestar maybe that polestar 3 video as i said already from yesterday that was amazing anyway i will see you of course in one of my next videos bye bye